We're gonna show you around our 1982 Toyota Chinook Resto Mod. Hi, I'm Ashley. I'm Austin and we're from uh, Fairbanks, Alaska. Let's give you a tour. So we started out with actually three separate vehicles. It was a Toyota Chinook, um, then a 1982 four-wheel drive Toyota pickup, and then a 99 Forerunner. So the Chinooks only came on two-wheel drive chassis from 1974 to 78. So we want to transplant that onto the 82 four-wheel drive chassis. And then we also swapped in the drivetrain from a 99 Forerunner. So I'll show you underneath the hood here. So this engine is a V6 3.4 liter um, from a 99 Forerunner, made it to an automatic transmission from the same year. The original engine in this truck was a four, little four cylinder carbureted engine. It just wasn't enough to power this heavy truck and go through the mountains and on the interstate. So we wanted to have the power to do it, everything we wanted. So we've got aluminum radiator to keep it a little bit cooler. We've got the Alpha battery. We've got um, smart isolator solenoid so we can charge our house batteries. We've got a 400 amp hour battery bank in the house. and. The, so we tar start charging those once our starting battery is fully charged. We have storage here, so we can keep all of our dirty stuff out here. We've got our, we've got our oils, we've got our straps, shackles. We've got a uh, Smitty built 9,000 pound winch up front here. So we got a high steer set up down up for the steering here. Um, just a basically beefier steering setup. It feels a lot more stable on the road and on the highway. And we've got Old Man Emu heavy duty suspension all the way around from front and rear um, with the nitro charger shocks. We've got the BFG Goodrich KO2 tires here, the 33 10 and a half uh, R15s on uh, factory Toyota wheels. For the front, we upgrade our brakes to the V6 calibers and the Land Cruiser rotors. So it got a little more stopping power with all the weight. This is the camper off the 1978 Chinook. We spent years trying to find one. It was uh, in terrible shape. The roof was caved in. Lots of fiberglass work was needed. The interior was rotted out. We painted the whole truck once we got the Chinook mounted onto this chassis. We went with the um, 1980 Toyota SR5 uh, paint scheme. These lines originally came up right here up at the door. We brought them back up the camper. Here we've got our uh, diesel heater exhaust right here. Down under here we've actually got um, little airline fittings here so we can air up our tires. Extra storage. Originally this was a propane um, storage but uh, we just went to an electric fridge and everything runs off electric. Shower hookup here. We've got water fill up here for our six gallon water tank. We've got our custom built bumper. We've got our ladder rack here where we mount our max tracks. This is our uh, little outdoor table set up. It just folds down from uh, actually from mountain hatch. So I built these rear, this rear bumper because the original bumper was uh, really big and bulky. Cut out a lot of our ground clearance. So I kept it up tight to the body. This is our step. It's also our license plate here. And uh, let me pass it off to Ashley on the inside here. Hey, welcome to the inside of Mako. We did a lot of work on the inside because when we originally got it, it was all orange shag carpeting and this gross wood paneling. And there was like little rat poop things in the walls. It was so, there were nests, it was disgusting. We completely ripped everything out. We put in wood flooring for the table. We found these old maps in this abandoned cabin in Alaska. So we decided to make a resin table out of the maps that we had found. So our first ever overlanding item purchase was our Blue Ridge Overland gear trash can. And we use it constantly. You wouldn't expect it, but it's something that makes all the difference in your daily life. So underneath is where we keep all of our kitchen supplies and cleaning supplies. And then you move your way over. We have this gauge here, and this is where we can control water heater. Our auxiliary fuel tank controls are here. Here we use a Dometic fridge. No complaints, it's great. But we did this before we figured out what we were gonna do for our bed. So when we open it, it hits our bed railings. Other than that, no complaints. That was our own fault. Uh, this is how we watch TV now. We use our iPad and we just have it mounted here. I was watching National Treasure earlier. <laughs> Didn't used to have windows that you see here. So when we got the canvas redone, which needed to happen, it was completely destroyed. We also got the windows put in and that has made all the difference. It's so much lighter in here when it's open and then when we're camped at a beach or something, it's so great to just get a panoramic view of everything that's around us. Uh, so now I'm gonna bring you into the bed. So our couch is divided into three separate platforms and then we remove these platforms 
and set it up onto these rails here. So all three would come up here and it comes out to being about a queen size bed and it ends right before you get to our cabinets. The reason we decided not to do how it was originally made, the bed would just pull out here. Um, and we did that partially because we we're really tall and partially because we got to keep all of this storage area underneath here. So we've got our um, battery bank is actually underneath here. Okay, so I'd like to emphasize that we are not carpenters. We stuck at it, uh, but we decided to build all of this stuff ourselves, mostly because we didn't know a carpenter who could do it for us. So this is, you know, we keep a mirror there so that we can get ready in the morning. And this is, we keep all of our dog stuff in the drawer here and then all of our toiletries here. This is our least favorite part of it. Uh, we were actually going through Death Valley and it was 120 degrees and we didn't have AC at the time. Uh, so we pulled up to Home Depot in Las Vegas and we bought a window unit and just made it work while we were on the road. And it doesn't work. <laughs> If it gets to 95 degrees, it overheats itself and turns off anyways. So, I mean, I mean, it does something, but we don't love it. <laughs> so the interior part of the cab was just a mess of fabrication work and sourcing weird parts that we found at obscure websites and stuff like that. Like this is the dash cap. The original one was destroyed and apparently every single one ever in existence is also destroyed. So we couldn't find one. Um, but there was this company that we found. It was a very weird website. I wasn't sure they were actually going to send us what they said they were. Um, but it came in and this works really, really great. We had to swap in the center console from the 99 Forerunner that we swapped the engine from because we needed the shifter. Um, so we made the whole center console work. We uh, custom built the, the screen area um, from by plastic welding pieces together to make it all work. So then now we also have a double, double dim, touch screen, navigation, and Apple CarPlay. Um, so we have all the amenities of a newer vehicle, but also the rest of the dash still has that classic look. Yeah, and then we got these uh, 3D cup holders because two was just not enough. Um, and we got them from Etsy. The gauges here up front, we love that it was all classic, but unfortunately they didn't come with the check engine light originally. So we went into Photoshop and I'm sure there was a website that did this somewhere, but we couldn't find it. So we created our own check engine light on Photoshop and brought it into a printing shop and asked them to please just print this on some clear, transparent paper. And so we actually added that into the gauge system that wasn't there originally, um, just to make it look put together. I mean, every little detail really, you put your heart and soul into something, every little detail, you want it to be perfect when you're done. Uh, the visors are also original. We did the fabric spray paint that surprisingly worked out really well. We haven't had any issues with that. It looks great. They were originally a bright blue. That was really gross. For the door panels, we found a guy on Instagram uh, called Key Panels, and he made the door cards for this original vehicle. And then all we had to do was cover it with the foam and the fabric to make it look finished. We also got the grab handles from Tacoma Twins. They were super, super nice because I accidentally ordered it in the wrong color first. And we're like, wait, no, can you do it in blue? And they're like, yeah, sure. Thanks for following us around and checking out our vehicle. We're super proud of it. You can follow our adventures. We're headed down to the Pan American Highway. We're Mako Venture Travel. Uh, we'll see you around.